Blood has three major components. Plasma, which is approximately 55%. Cells, and there's two different types of cells. There's red blood cells and white blood cells. And also platelets. Now platelets are very, very small in number. Red blood cells make up about 44% and white blood cells are also very low in number. If you take a sample of blood and you spin it around really, really, really quickly, it will break up into its separate components with the cells, the red blood cells being the heaviest and coming down on the bottom and the plasma being the lightest and being on the top. You can see here plasma is about 55%, red blood cells are about 44% and the remainder are white blood cells and platelets. Plasma. Plasma is the fluid component or the pale yellow liquid of blood that we just saw. And you'll see it in hospitals in bags like this. It's made up of water, which is about 90%, but also ions, dissolved gases, proteins, hormones, nutrients, and wastes. This is the fluid component that everything else gets dissolved in. When you squeeze a pimple, and you've squeezed it too much, you'll see some yellowy liquid, very, very watery type liquid come out. This is plasma. Red blood cells, also known as erythrocytes. Red blood cells are biconcave in shape. And what I mean by biconcave in shape is this little hole here. They almost look like little donuts. And if you look at it from a top view, it looks like a donut in that direction. But if you look at it from the side, you'll see that it's got an indentation at the top and also one at the bottom. So it's like a little cave, a cave at the top and a cave underneath. It has two caves. So it's called bi meaning two and concave, which is just the term for the indentation there or the cave. So biconcave is its shape and it looks like a little donut like this. They're very, very flexible shaped like this. Red blood cells are made from the bone marrow and they lose their nucleuses. And this is why they get this indentation or this tiny um, cave-like shape. The loss of nucleus also means that they have a very short lifespan. They last for approximately four months. Red blood cells are filled with a substance called hemoglobin. And this is responsible for transporting oxygen around the body. So we have a red blood cell, on it we have tiny haemoglobin molecules and these haemoglobin molecules carry the oxygen which the blood gets from the lungs, carries them around the body to the cells where it's needed and then the haemoglobin releases the oxygen to the cells. So haemoglobin is a red pigment and it's what gives blood its red colour. It carries oxygen all around the body and it contains iron and this is really important because iron is very important when it comes to red blood cells. Iron deficiency can lead to something called anemia which will mean that you become very tired and that's because you're not getting enough oxygen being transported around the body. And here's just another picture of a red blood cell with a little section there of haemoglobin which is stuck to the outside of the red blood cell and you can see here these haemoglobin complexes here can carry oxygen molecules within them and that's how oxygen gets transported around the body. Red blood cells make up about 40 to 45 percent of male blood and less in female blood, about 36 to 45 percent. This is because males need more oxygen because they have a higher metabolism. White blood cells, also called leukocytes. White blood cells are much larger than red blood cells, but remember they only make up about 0.1% of normal blood. They're responsible for our immune system. And simply put, they fight infection and they can engulf bacteria and damage cells. They're a bit like little Pac-Man. And here's a picture here. They can eat bad things such as bacteria 
or leftover pieces of damaged cells and things that we don't want in our body. So this is the white blood cell here and it comes along and it basically goes yum, yum, yum. It eats up the bacteria and the bacteria is now within the white blood cells where it gets digested and gets taken care of. White blood cells also develop antibodies and these are crucial for our immune defense systems. You'll hear about antibodies when we're talking about vaccines and little kids get vaccinated when they're little against things like um, polio and measles, mumps and rubella and there's vaccinations you also get when you're older. This is all related to white blood cells which are responsible for our immune system. And here's just a picture of a white blood cell dressed up like a Viking soldier. He's out to protect us and kill the bad stuff. And this is an electron microscope photo here of a white blood cell actually attacking bacterial cells. These are your bacterial cells here and it sends out, shoots out um, things to grab onto that bacteria and then it'll suck it in and eat it. Normal White blood cells, remember, only are about 0.1% of all of the blood cells. So you can see here you've got lots and lots of red blood cells, a few platelets, and here your white blood cells. However, if you've got an infection, you need a lot more white blood cells. So they come out in force and they'll multiply and they're there to attack um, all the bacteria and to defend your immune system. Platelets are crucial in our blood, even though they only make up 0.01%. And you can see some of them here. They're cell fragments and they're pieces of other cells. And you can see that they're tiny here in comparison to the other cells. And they're essential in clotting, which prevents blood loss. And what happens if you damage a blood vessel, you'll obviously start bleeding because this allows blood to flow out. But what happens is the platelets will congregate in this area and will trap and hold on to all the red blood cells to stop the blood from forming out. And this forms what's called a clot. And that's what forms a scab when you scratch yourself or cut yourself and it stops you from bleeding. So here we have a sample of blood as seen through a microscope and let's see from what you've learned if you can identify the different components. So this here, it's large and there's only a few of them, so it has to be a white blood cell. This one is pointing to these red shaped cells here, there's lots of them so they must be red blood cells. This is pointing here to this tiny little purple shape and there's only a few of them. So they must be platelets. And this is pointing to the liquid in between all of these cells. So that must be plasma.